So we have a very special guest with us today, and it's none other than Reggae Girls defender, Alika Keen. Hi, Alika. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well and the family's okay. Yeah. Hey, Simon. I'm doing pretty well. Uh, everyone's doing well at home. They're happy and warm, despite this <laughs> coming. It's been quite a year, 2022, for you, hasn't it? You know, making your international debut, you know, playing at different clubs in Europe and now to the Champions League. You know, how would you say 2022 has been for you in terms of your footballing career yeah you know um i was introduced to european football through my first club in lithuania in 2020 so i spent two seasons there um and then decided to make the jump to a different club so 2022 came with a lot of uh different variations of my career you know stepping into the hungarian league was was a different level from what i experienced in lithuania so that was nice and then, as you mentioned, I played with the reggae girls in March before I joined Tiffany in Hungary. But that actually wasn't my debut. I had been with um, the senior team back in 2015, I think. So I took like almost a seven year hiatus before I got back, invited back to the to the camp. So that was a really cool experience to see some of the girls again and, you know, put the, the country colors on. So, yeah. And just a bit in terms of your your background, were you? Were you born in the island or to the, in the States to Jamaican parents? In the States to Jamaican mother. Okay. And in terms of, you know, growing up in, in Florida, was it always football for you or you played other sports growing up? I played softball until I was, I think, 10 or 11 years old. And at the same time, I was doing piano. So it was piano, football, and softball. And my parents were saying, you know, all right, this is getting too crazy for us. We're driving everywhere across town. So you got to pick one thing. And of course, football won, you know, that's my love. <laughs> so I stopped playing at age 11 and then the other, the other activities that I was involved in and then just went straight for football after that. Okay. All right. And in terms of, you know, playing football in high school, were you always a defender or you played other positions? I actually, so, you know, in my youth career, I was more in the midfield. And uh, then my coach converted me to a forward when I was, I don't know, 13 years old. And I played in that position until U17 when my new coach converted me to a central defender. And, you know, of course, that's the year that you get recruited for university as well. So I got stuck with that <laughs> defense position. Um, and that's what has continued. But I always have love in my heart for, for the midfield. So <laughs> I understand. And, you know, you had appearances for Jamaica at the under 17 and the under 20 level. Was it also? Uh, defense and that in those age group levels as well actually I played in the midfield and at those levels so um yeah that was my primary experience with Jamaica was in the mid <laughs> okay and of course 2012 came as around and here comes Harvard so you know a lot of people when they think Harvard they think it's a lot about education 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 but as you know it's it also has some great sporting programs and teams as well so yeah. I just want to talk Absolutely. about that program as well, you know, playing soccer at, at Harvard. Yeah, you know, I it was never really on my radar. Academics were incredibly important to me growing up. I was super competitive in, in the classroom and just always wanted to be learning as much as I could. Uh, but I was also really into football, so I didn't know that I could have, you know, the best of both worlds uh, until we went to North Carolina and one of my older teammates had committed to Harvard so they came to our game to watch her and then they saw me and they were like yeah oh, who's this so I went on the visit I was like my parents were so excited because you know who wouldn't be uh, about Harvard knocking at your door but um, I still wasn't like getting too into it because my love was FSU I was like a, a huge FSU person <laughs> uh, sorry to any Gator fans out there um, but when I visited the campus and walked around and I met my teammates and other you know, students, I just fell in love, like it felt like my place, just the perfect fit. So, and, you know, they were still super, you know, competitive and on the field, but also driven off the field. And on, that's not to say that other universities don't have that as well, but it just felt like my perfect fit. So, yeah, it was, it was nice to be at a school that had both. And, uh, and I think we won two out of the four years, um, the, the title. So, that was really cool. And we went to the NCAA, I believe, two, two or three of those years. So it was nice. And how challenging was it to, to balance your time in the classroom, 
training, gym, and of course games as well. Yeah, it it was difficult. I won't lie. You know, it was uh, it's one thing to you know balance all of those things when you're in high school and you have a routine, but then you get a little bit of freedom in college and. And, you know, you have friends, but then you have an, an intense study schedule and then you're traveling for football. And it was it was difficult. I definitely struggled my first year and a half, I would say. But then you start to get into a routine and, and figure it out. And you have your teammates to to kind of help guide you with things that worked for them. So that really that really helped me manage. Better. Yeah. 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 I won't say I perfected it, but I definitely got better by the time I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, after graduation, there was, you know, a period of time before you turned pro and was at Orlando. So what happened between that time when you finished college and then, of course, signing with Orlando? Sure. Uh, well, actually, so, you know, we had the U-20 run, um, I believe, in the Caymans my junior year. Uh, and then you know, Hugh took over the team the following year. And so we did um, this. That was my first senior call up was my senior fall. And uh, there was some issue that was happening with my body. And I had like this overuse injury um, from a trainer. So I kind of went into my senior season at Harvard with this injury. And when I spoke with um, one of the um, physical therapists at my club, at the school, he said that there's not a lot of like research on it. It was called uh, osteitis pubis. So he said, the main thing is to, you know, take anti-inflammatories, which I'm actually allergic to and rest, which when you're in season, that's really difficult. And especially my senior year, you know, the IVs don't really do red shirts. You have to actually take off a full year of school in order for that to happen. Yeah, it's difficult to do that. So I didn't want that for my senior year. And I thought I could play through it and just manage my body. Um, but it was a difficult season for me, physically, mentally. You know, I wanted to go out with a bang and um, that was really hard. So after that season was over, uh, I took some time. I just rested like, like he advised. And come in the spring, I wanted to run again, you know, get back active. And it was still really bothering me. So he said um, that I should get a cortisone shot and that will help like manage the pain while I correct the mechanical issues that kind of started this. And that was it for football. I was like, all right, I guess I guess I'm done. You know, I this is really painful. So I went to Peru for a year. I worked for a nonprofit with one of my best friends, we were having a great time. Like I was active again because the cortisone shot helped, but I didn't do the rehab because I had left the country. So the year was great, but when I got back home, uh, I felt the pain again and it was more intense. Uh, I was actually on a trip with my, my parents and my grandmother to DC and there was so much pain at one point that I had to get like this little, um, what do they call it? The little uh, mechanical wheelchairs or whatever yeah. uh, that my grandma was using and I was using. So we were like racing down <laughs> in D.C. But it, it was that painful where I couldn't walk that we had to order one for the day. So my dad was like, you're too young for this. We need to find you someone that can help. And by the grace of God, I found two women and two more women who helped get me back in shape. And uh, then Jamaica was like, hey, we've got another qualifier around, you know, and that was when we qualified so but I wasn't ready yet I was still cooking you know I was still trying to get back um but yeah so that's kind of my journey back I was able to get healthy like by October like right around the time that we qualified and uh you know then it was just a matter of getting back into football and Hugh had mentioned you know m many of our female players are on professional teams so you would need to do that if you want to get back in the squad and I had a connection um, who knew someone at Orlando, so I was able to get invited to preseason, and the rest is history. I got I got stuck. <laughs> so sorry, that was really long, but yeah, that's no, the whole. It's fine. It just shows that in life, you know, sometimes the, you know these setbacks it prepares you for what lies ahead, and look where we are right now, playing in Europe, the national team. So, yeah. Thank you. That's that's a great outlook. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that challenge that you had. Would you say that you're a hundred percent recovered from that, or majority is behind you now? Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I feel great, thank God. Like I don't have that issue anymore, and uh, you know, I just have to 
make sure that certain areas of my body are more strong than others because we don't want that to happen again. But uh, I feel great. I just have to, you know, keep building my confidence and and I uh, hope that I'll get another shot at the national team. So. Yeah, absolutely. And the experience, you know, had after Orlando was an opportunity to go to Europe in, in Lithuania. Right. Did you f find any difference in terms of, you know, style of playing Europe compared to when you're playing in North America for the vast, vast majority of your life from high school coming yeah. up? Yeah, I would, I would say so. I think the American style is very direct. And uh, I won't say, well, you know, growing up, of course, the game has changed over time, but growing up, it was all about, you know, speed, physicality, and at least in some of the countries that I've been playing in, in Europe, it's, they want to do a little bit more technical things. So I've enjoyed that aspect of, of learning a different side of the game, but, you know, obviously the American style, there's, it still does well because we, the U S is still, you know, blowing out people and running them down, but I'm, excited to see how the game is growing around the world because it's not just about that anymore you know people are learning how to play football or not learning but they're uh how do I say they're perfecting it you know and there's more investment into these women so they're able to focus more on football and not have separate careers or just get deeper into you know the the real football style so I like that a lot and when you were at FC Gunter you played alongside Trudy right yeah, we overlapped for one for half of a season, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, what was the experience like playing with a fellow countrywoman? You know, in that it country, was you got so along. So nice. Yeah, it was it was so nice because I hadn't seen Trudy since I was I think that last Cayman Islands U twenty. Mm -hmm. I don't think we played together after that, so it had been a while, and uh, it was just great to play with each other again. We weren't in the midfield like we were in in the youth days, but. We still had the good energy and the good vibes. So, it, and it was nice to have like someone who's mine, you know. I had been at Gintra for a year, so everyone is technically mine, but it's different when you have like your people around, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was, yeah. we had a good time. Okay. I'll be honest, you know, if, if I were to type in your name into say YouTube or Google, you know, something that would pop up is the Lithuanian reality TV series. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'd love to know about that experience singing, if that's something alongside softball growing up that was a passion of yours. Yeah, it, it was. You know, my, my mother and I were always like doing karaoke in the car and she would take one part of the duet and I would take the other. So it was always a, a big central part of my life. And um, I didn't realize how much I loved singing until I got to college. And uh, my teammates found out that I could sing because it's it's therapeutic for me, you know, like I love football and I love music. And when I'm stressed about one, the other one helps me get over it, you know. <laughs> so uh, my teammates discovered that I could play and they had me, you know, do the freshman talent show. So within the first few weeks of college, I was branded as a singer and it made it impossible to escape this side of my life that I'd kind of been neglecting, like for the most part. So, uh, yeah, it just, it took off in college and I really, I really love to perform and sing and write. And my Lithuanian teammates also found that part of me and they were like, all right, if you sign next year, we're definitely gonna have to do some sort of singing competition for you and, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, you know what that means. It just means that you and Tiff have to do a World Cup song together for the regular. You, yes, absolutely. Actually, Alison Swaby said at the at the last camp that I was at, we have so many musicians on the team, you know, we need to do like another strike hard song or something. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we we've we've spoken about it. Nothing's in the books yet, but it's it's an idea. So yeah, yeah, there's still some time before Australia yeah. and New Zealand. So okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 At, and as you know, you, you scored for Jamaica against Grenada. I want to know yes. about that experience scoring for your country because, you know, many people get the opportunity to play, but to score is right. a completely different feat. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy because I wasn't even sure if I was ready for that camp. Uh, I, I had just left Lithuania and I was home for, you know, a few months training on my own, but nothing with like a team. So um, when I got to the camp, I... I just wanted to jump in and thank God I did because I didn't have another opportunity after that. 
So when Coach Vin put me on the field and I was excited to, to get my feet wet and play again, uh, and I just had that opportunity to strike the ball. I always wanted to score a goal like that from, from far out. And Trudy was coming and, and she saw me and I was like, what? And she just jumped out the way, like in perfect timing. <laughs> Cause I almost blasted her to the moon too. So that was <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was, it was such a blessing because I was so doubtful about going and playing and am I ready? You know, I haven't been with the girls for seven years and I'm not at my best right now. And uh, I feel like it was a little God wink, like, hey, just trust me, you know, like uh, I got you. And to be able to have that accolade was really cool because that was my first goal ever. Even in the youth levels, I didn't score anything. So that was really nice. And it's it seems like immediately after that international window, here comes FC, you're out of Hungary and now you're playing with TIFF. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, it was great timing. And then we were able to cultivate more of our chemistry on the field. So uh, yeah, I had a good time. It was a short four months and I wish we had more, but uh, hopefully we'll have some more in, in different colors coming yeah. soon. But yeah, it was nice. But you're part of a very successful team, you know, that won the cup and were close to winning the league as well. So I mean, it must be a great environment to be in when you were in Hungary. Yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely. And it was such an exciting year for them because I think the previous season they were near the bottom. So when Tiffany, Tiffany really worked her booty off for that club, you know, she came in, added some energy and um, and I, I was so grateful to, to come and contribute a little bit. I was out for some time with some little little nicks here and there but um but the times that we did get on the field it, it was exciting and the cup you know the first time in in the the history of the club that was so exciting to be part of like I've always wanted to make history somewhere so that was really cool <laughs> yeah definitely a nice feather in your cap and of yeah. course here you are now uh from Lithuania to Hungary to now Czech Republic yes being one of the few reggae girls playing in the the Champions League. What has yeah. that been experience been like? Incredible. Uh, just another blessing, you know. I, I wasn't sure what was coming after Hungary, and uh, my agent was like, hey, how about this Slavia team? And I had heard about them a bit, but when I looked up how they played, I was like, oh, yeah, sign me up. I'm there. Like, I'll go right away. And I've been able to, you know, get my confidence, learn a lot. The girls are super friendly and I just feel like more of team chemistry here, you know, and a team vibe, which I love. And the fact that we made it through that, uh, that Valor stage and now we're in the, the group stage, it's, we've got six games and four left now uh, to just try and, and get toward the top of the table and make it to the next round. So, but it's, it's such an amazing experience. I can't really describe it. Honestly. Yeah, it's just, you know, a couple of minutes ago, we we're talking about some of the challenges you had from college days. And now here you are playing Champions League football, yeah. playing, playing in Europe, you know? Right. It just goes to show us how in life sometimes patience or adversity, <clears throat> what happens after that, you know? So it's yeah. just amazing how time just can change things. Definitely. Yeah. Life is so unpredictable. It is. It really is. But um, like I said, I'm just really grateful to God for giving me those opportunities and just trying to make the most of it, you know, as much as I can. So. Absolutely. And as you know, there's still another nine months to go before the World Cup and there will be a couple more international breaks for you to strut mm -hmm. your stuff and <laughs> it's hard to, to make that 23, 26 member squad. Yeah. Yeah, we've got we've got some time. We've got some time. Just have to stay diligent, uh, disciplined, and and hopeful. So yeah, and I mean, when you look at the the defensive options with the Swaby sisters and Kanye coming back, yourself, yeah. you know, the defense it's it's looking pretty strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. I th I think we're in good shape. I think we're in good shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I, when I saw Kanye's name on the roster, I was like, hey, she's back. So I'm excited to see how the games go next weekend. Next weekend. Yeah. All right. Well, Alika, thank you very much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. And all the best for, for the rest of the season. Thank you so much, Simon. It was a pleasure talking to you. <laughs>